What's up guys, if you're interested in getting sweet altars like these every month, you can do so by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com slash it resolves. Hey, welcome back to another episode of It Resolves. My name is Kevin. My name is Will. Thank you for tuning in, watching, or listening, doing it however you're doing it, where you're doing it. Guys, as always, this episode is brought to you by you, our lovely patrons. We get to finally read out a long list of patrons. Oh, so, boy. Yeah. Right. This is the the really the first time we've gotten to do this. So yeah, it, it's I think gonna we be had a little one bit... patron at yeah. one point, uh, but now we've got a lot. And as promised, we do give Heck every yeah. patron a shout out. So I'm excited to do it. A bit of a warning. This is going to be a bit of an elongated so section. But we're gonna get through it. So our first one, Isaac, thank you for being a patron. Milo. Milo what? <laughs> Milo Manson. My man. Good luck. <laughs> Duncan, you are the man. Thanks for being a patron. Alex. Alex sister. Sisler? Is that Sisler? <laughs> this is going so well. Alex, you might be my favorite. Orion, oh, I love your belt. Uh, Bjorn, <laughs> thank you, sir. Your <laughs> belt. Orion's oh, belt. You didn't get it? No, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, Tyler Horn, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Emiliano Martinez Toledo, sir. Uh, that's my new band name. <laughs> Kai P, thank you so much. Brian H, my man. Uh, Ryan Elkins, thank you. Dark Brother 720. <laughs> yes. I think I played you uh, <laughs> in StarCraft once. Uh, Zachary Taylor, welcome. Thank you so much. Maxwell, sir, welcome. Uh, Guy T, thank you so much for <laughs> Guy supporting Guy T us. is my round. I name. love it. <laughs> uh, Mitchell, Mitchell Urban, thank you. Timothy, little Timmy, thanks for being here. <laughs> he's, he's probably a giant. I know, probably. <laughs> Everyone calls me little. <laughs> Wesley Ho. Wesley, yo. <laughs> Yannick, your name sounds like a magic card's name. MTG dude, I think we know you. Yeah, th- we do. He's won a giveaway. Heck yeah. That's like, right. I think our last giveaway. Uh, Sven, Fried Sam. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Fried- yeah. Thanks for being here. Sure. <laughs> Justice. Ugh. Timmy Smith, number two. Thank you for being here. Anthony Sanchez, we appreciate it. Jeremy Hayes, we're glad you were with us. James Everidge, a champion. Joseph, is that still? Yeah. Joseph Still, thank you for being still. Tristan, a legend. <laughs> Carlos, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly, just. Christoph, you're rounding us out with 31 patrons. Guys, thank you. Genuinely, I know that was a little long, but thank you guys so much for being a patron of our channel. We really do appreciate it. If Love you are it, yeah, interested absolutely. in becoming a patron, the link for our Patreon is down below. Uh, we did revamp our rewards this month, which I'm sure is part of why we're getting a lot of definitely, patrons. Definitely, definitely. But uh, we wanted to give something back to you guys, which is in the form of altars that we're making. So uh, feel free to sign up the cards mm-hmm. for the month of August if you sign up. Uh, Elish Norn and Karn Liberated whoop, 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 are the two altars. You can check out the details Karn. on our Patreon. Wow. Wow. I just dropped stuff. a bunch. I'm um, sorry. I wanted to peruse wanted them to in their glory. Um, th- we do already have them in, so we're going to get them shipped out as soon as possible. But I think yeah. the goal is to try and go for the end of the month each month just because we don't want to leave anybody out. That's the easiest way. Correct. We're shipping um, the last day, literally the last day yeah. of the month because it's it's the most fair to anyone who would be a patron. Exactly. And we do want to make sure. I mean, if you subscribe also, on the 29th yeah. of a month, we want to make sure that you still get your rewards for that month. Uh, and so that's the goal, uh, but we do already have those cards in for you, so we're really excited about that. Right. It's also just easier for us. It is. It's just to, kind just of a one-time honest. thing instead right. of like just. We'd rather do it all at once, it. but um, yeah. you, you, we will obviously uh, be sending all those sweet cards out. So yep. get ready for those. Yep. Yep. Awesome. Um, so Ooh, Kevin, you ready to talk some magic? That was such dude? an intro. Uh, I loved it. I'm, I know. I mean, it I'm was pumped. fun. Uh, hopefully, I say hopefully, but I guess not hopefully, the, the Patreon list won't be quite as long to thank, but I also <laughs> hey, want more Patreon Hey, if we get 30 people, more new so patrons, I will speak I would their it. name to the heavens. Heck yeah. Um, All of you, you sweet, lovely, beautiful people. 
today guys we're gonna talk two things uh the biggest thing being uh the new set that has been released oh yeah a of lot of El cool Dream. stuff a lot of really interesting info that's come out about that so i'm really excited to talk about that we are also going to talk a little bit about limited uh depending on time we'll kind of determine how detailed we get with mm -hmm. that i'm sure mm -hmm. but uh we of course kick off with our random card of the day in three two one Hannah, Hannah. Hey, Shift Navigator. Uh, this is actually a pretty fun card. So, uh, yeah. legendary creature, human artificer for one, a white, and a blue. Uh, it is a one, two, and you can pay one, a white, and a blue, tap it, and return target artifact or enchantment card from your graveyard to your hand. This has seen play in Commander mostly. Basically. I mean, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Uh, it's mean, not legal in Standard or Modern, obviously. So Right. Um, I guess it would be in the. Um, like vintage right yeah technically but, i mean it's not good enough no god no it's uh -huh. way too slow mm -hmm. uh but it is a very good card i mean recurring artifacts or enchantments uh in mm -hmm. commander in particular is quite good yeah um i'm sure there's some weird combo that this could play off i can too. think of a few you can um like i mean this is maybe not a commander yeah it's great one but you can yeah. do something like sack a pirate spell bomb or something like that yeah um yeah. and then tap it and replay it and then there's a card that says whenever a permanent enters the battlefield untap target permanent that's paradox engine which was just banned you're right um i did actually just watch Whoops. a game nights episode <laughs> yeah i did just watch a game nights episode where that was like a combo that they played it was an yeah. older one uh and that did kind of attest to the power level of paradox engine as oh, you yeah. mentioned when we talked about it though it's great and it's a big big mm. swing for the decks that ran it it's just not yep. a lot of decks ran it right um but that being said this is a very hannah is a very cool card it's not yep. an amazing card by any means but it is a good one i mean it's I, just kind it's of fine. good insurance i think yeah yeah, um, yeah for a lot of decks uh bring that recursion in yeah i mean there's a there's a blue white um enchantment aura mm. uh prison deck in commander that's pretty sweet yes. yeah, like yeah, turns yeah. everything into enchantments and auras yeah and makes it impossible for your opponent to attack you or yeah cast it's spells ridiculous and, yeah 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 it's, it's um, it, it takes a long time to set up but is yeah. um i mean nigh unbreakable once it's there. yeah exactly um, it's just a little bit brittle in the early turns we'll say um sure if you can the break blue things helps. up the yeah, blue, blue helps, definitely but, helps permission um, um well, really quick shout out also to Teresa nielsen who did the art for this uh very beautiful art i think teresa great. is one of my favorite artists and it's as great. well as i'm sure a lot of people they're all very uh intimate portraitures yeah of... they're really really nice yeah yeah. yeah yeah um the texture on them makes it really really cool i think there's a I good bit of texture there i agree very very pretty very beautiful anyway guys a new set's art coming nerd out stuff art out of the way stuff. yeah yeah uh so october 4th 2019 coming up fairly soon uh we will have throne of eldraine coming out Whoop. Um, a lot of people speculated because this was all announced at like a panel and all this stuff. Um, Mark Rosewater actually had to do an announcement because they released like the packaging, mm -hmm. um, which just had like the logo and then fairies around it. Okay. And everybody was like, fairies are back. Like literally as soon as that was out, everybody was yeah. like, fairies, guys, fairies, it's back. It's happening. And then Mark Rosewater posted something. He was like, I mean, fairies are going to be in it, but like everybody calm down. Like it's right. not, it's not based around fairies. In fact, what we have found out that it is based around as far as the setting and everything goes is think Camelot yep. mixed with Brothers Grimm fairy tales. That's yes. what the description that we have been given. Um, it seems, that seems already, that seems dope. alone seems pretty cool. So yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we have seen some of the art on some of the cards already and it's really, mm -hmm. really sweet. Um, I, I love it. Uh, I've I think, only seen the little girl. The little girl is like brutal. Locks. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty intense, it's right? Pretty awesome. Um, no, there's a few other pieces of art that have been released, um, as well as some info on the planeswalkers, which mm. uh are Rowan and, yeah, the, and his... the brother sister combo yeah, yeah, from yeah. Battlebond. Right. Um, but there's also supposedly another planeswalker in this set that we have not gotten much info on at all yet. Is it um, new? Do we know if they're new? I don't know. We have no idea. Uh, here's I just want to make a call back okay. to when War of the Spark was coming out. Okay. And everybody was wondering where Garuk was. Oh. <laughs> hey, where's uh, where's he at? Where's he at? 
that's not a bad call so a lot of I people mean, are speculating that it's gonna be a brand new planeswalker like they think because would make perfect sense it would make fair. perfect sense so for anybody that doesn't know this is a one-off set this is gonna yep. be the only set on this plane uh, right. as far as we're understanding so far so far that's so, I it's mean, the only one plane that we get this year it's the only yeah, one yeah so far um but uh the, nobody is i don't think confirmed whether or not the third planeswalker is one that we've seen or not seen so it could be garrick i mean i i don't know i mean he so he's we just were rampaging through the woods well that's the thing this deep big, dark bad scary wolf, woods dude. yeah it's big bad wolf right so there. not not only is that just kind of cute but yeah, yeah um mark rosewater also explicitly mentioned whenever people were speculating about garuk and he he said no he's not in the set but we have big plans for him. Yes. Were his words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't know if that's... Because, you know, I mean, Magic plans things decades at, Yeah, out. oh, yeah. Like, They've got a few years in I advance. I said decades, but, like... It's usually two to three years in advance. Yeah, they're, it's a while that they're they... They're ahead of us. Yeah, exactly. So um, I am i don't know that this is when we see him again or not. Right. But, I mean, right. he is... I'm expecting him any day now. Yeah, I mean, in the next... I would say within the next year, for sure, we're mm-hmm. going to see a Garrick. I don't know where. Of some kind, yeah. It, I don't know if it's going to be in this set. I think it actually... I mean, I didn't think about it until you said it, but I do think that that makes a lot of sense. Like, that's a cool it's way like, to bring him back in, is, like, right. he's just rampaging through all of these fairy tale things and, like, all this stuff. Like, that'd be right? kind of badass. I'm right? kind of into that. Right? Um, I don't I'm know. Saying. I mean, it would make some sense, I would say. It would um, be, like... N- I don't think it would be too much of a it's not a stretch Sell, right yeah right right like i could buy that 100%. yeah me too um yeah. but regardless uh really really excited about this set they've released a lot of marketing info on this kind of more than i'm used to for yeah other well there's sets. more marketing stuff than there usually is with this as That's well fair. which is kind of interesting so i wonder if they got a new marketing director i don't know like, i know think about- so mark rosewater did say that And I don't know if this is in reference to the story and, like, Mm -hmm. the setting of it all because it is such a cool, rich story kind of idea. Um, Or if it is in regards to the marketing stuff or both. I don't know. But Mark Rosewater did say he'd been fighting for a lot of these, like, the things that they're implementing in this set he's been fighting for for quite a long time. And so I don't know if it's, like, he was selling them on the story or if he was selling them on the marketing ideas or if, like, Hmm. they're justifying some of these marketing ideas from previous stuff. Uh, because a lot of it is definitely stuff that some of it we've seen before and some of it is kind of new and like the way they're doing it is different, but yeah, I don't know how much he has to do with like the marketing of things. I don't know either. And said, I, I don't know. I know he's definitely, I mean, he talks about in his drive to work a lot about, yeah. um, d- the design of sets and stuff. So yeah. I, and I mean, that's his, that's his thing. Right. Like, clearly that's his thing. Right, I don't right, know right, if right, he right. has influence on the marketing stuff at all. Mm-hmm you know what like i don't know if that's what he was fighting was the marketing team you know but you think like the mythic championship is huge a lot of money went into that yeah uh as being their the premier magic like circuit basically and it's new yeah you know uh so all the money that goes into uh you talk about arena oh i like it too i like it a lot nine hosting i'm in sean plot give me more of him rough uh (laughs) <laughs> kind of a rough week for sean plot yeah, yeah, yeah we lost one of our good we buddies. lost a good streamer there um, um he was more than a streamer sir sorry jeff robinson none of you guys know who he is because he's a starcraft host but i know of him but i i don't he know he was him well. the best just a moment he was the best oh. starcraft to ho- esports host ever period yeah. end of subject fair enough uh, jeff in control robinson was <sighs> r.i.p gone too soon will be missed uh Definitely. He was very young. He was very cool. Um, uh, regardless, uh, <coughs> bring it back. Um, <laughs> what was I saying? Uh, the Mythic Championship is yeah, great. Yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, I think the I mean the the market marketing team has kind of gone ham over at Watson. Yeah, and I'm like I'm happy about it. Like, no, it's great. Yeah. So the thing I'm is, okay, with this set in particular, like, and some of the stuff that they've announced, which we will go over in a second, but a lot of the stuff seems like it's aimed towards players who actually care about the game <laughs> is the best way i can phrase uh, it yeah instead of like hey we need to do like planeswalker decks and like all these like intro level products which yeah no, realistically kind of suck i yeah. mean they still have them i'm that's still gonna happen but like they're also now pandering to people who are like more collectors and like people who want premium cards that's and like things point. like that yeah and like 
I'm fine with that. Like, I'm in that camp. I don't really right. give a crap about these Planeswalker decks. Like, <laughs> I think anybody who, like, would listen to a Magic podcast, so friends they among us. They care enough. <laughs> right. They've been around <laughs> enough to kind of know yeah. um, what a worthwhile product is or not. And we yeah. I mean, we will usually open these things, and we always have the same thing to say. These are lots of fun. If yeah. you're new, they're great. Yeah. If you're not new, they're going to be a little bit disappointing. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, I will say this, though. There have been a couple of occasions where we've done that, where it's been, like, Okay, these are not high level cards. Mm -hmm. These are very easy. These are very clear strategies and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But they were fun. So even if you were an experienced player, I mean, they yeah. could still be fun. I mean, guys, it's magic. But that's like, not the target. Like the target right. is the new player. Sure. And there's not really many. There's never been huge like big standard staples in these decks. Like they're not valuable. True. They're just they're just there for intro stuff. You know what yeah, I mean? They're and, like, there that's kind like of at the edge of your target. Yeah. Walmart like yeah, yeah. checkout thing to say. Yeah. Like, hey, tempt me, buy me. Right. Um, which, right. I'll be honest, I usually do just because I like sealed stuff. <laughs> and it's the only reason I kind of am okay with them right now is because they do, while they're worse planeswalkers, it's the only place to get certain planeswalkers and that's, stuff like that. That's a point. It's a point. It's not <laughs> worth it. I'll go ahead hey, and say. It's fine. It's definitely not worth it. But to I like sealed their product. Own, man. Um, some people like dude, crunchy peanut butter. Some people are wrong. Like, to each their own, man. That's fine. <laughs> I like both. Um, I li I will eat both. I prefer crunchy. I like crunchy. I've never met anybody else that's For like, I love crunchy peanut butter. Bro, that's my... We buy two different peanut butters. Do you just want to like each get a jar of peanut butter and eat it on the podcast? That is frequently my... Just, oh, God. We <gasps> never talk. We <laughs> were <laughs> <laughs> That'd be terrible. That'd be so bad. Have you seen the no. video of, of Rhett? Uh, no. No, I'm sorry. It's Link. Oh. He eats a jar of, of Peter Pan peanut butter without <laughs> drinking milk. Oh my god! It's that's like a little terrible. like ASMR, like oh minimalist. Oh my god, that's bad. It is such a cool video. Oh, that's so terrible. By the end, he's like, <laughs> he says nothing until the very end. He's <laughs> almost crying. Like, my name's Link, and I just ate a, a jar of peanut butter, peanut butter, <laughs> without any milk. Oh, that sounds terrible. Uh, Rhett and Linker from Good Mythical Morning for yeah, all those great. who may not know. You should know because everybody knows. But You should know. They're They're people. one of the biggest they're YouTubers wonderful. right now. They're great people. Um, regardless, Where we digress. We? Where were um, we? Marketing stuff with this set. Yeah. Uh, there's so a lot of it. There's a lot of it. I'm going to go over some of it and you're going to fill me in if I missed anything, which is going to go super well because you read the article. Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. So normal yeah. booster boxes. They are there. Yep. Nothing is changing there, so the, that market is still a piece to whatever. Uh, standard prices for that, I don't think there's any big variance there, although I guess there is no MSRP now and right. stuff like that. Right. Um, it's generally going to be the same, though. Yeah. Um, okay, so collector's boosters are now going to be a thing. So these are going to have like premium cards in them. They're going to mm -hmm. be 20 to 25 bucks per booster, is what they've, the price point that they've given us. I guess they can't set a, an actual one. Uh, but that's kind of the rough house of what we're looking at. Inside it, you will get one rare or mythic extended art card. Mm -hmm. Now, that's going to be very similar to like Mythic Edition uh, and things like that that we've seen in the past. So okay. that's something that's been tested, but they're doing it in a different way here. Okay. Uh, foil, rare, mythic, uh, extended art, or showcase card. Uh, borderless planeswalkers, things like that. Borderless planeswalkers. Yeah, I mean, That's same sweet. thing with. I mean, that was Mythic Edition, right? That's yeah. That was literally what they did for Mythic Edition. So uh, yeah. it's gonna be pretty cool. Nine foil commons or uncommons, including variant versions. So there are variant arts in this set. Uh, they did release uh, just the card frame hmm. that they're doing. And so they haven't told us the mechanic and all this stuff. It looks like a storybook, which is very Brothers Grimm. I mean, it makes sense. Right. Um, and there's going to be basically the regular card, which you'll just get in an everyday booster pack. Uh, and that has a specific card frame, one that we'll be seeing the majority of the time. And yep. then in these premium packs, you'll be able to get a different version of the same card. Right. Like the card frame looks a little bit nicer and like done up and all this stuff. It's a little bit fancier. A little, a little bit, bit fancier. Prettier. It's just the quote unquote premium version. Yeah, yeah. Salad with extra dressing. Yeah. And it does look good. Um, sure. And I'm interested to see about that mechanic too. Um. Yeah. It looks, I mean, it looks kind of like sagas meet levels. Yeah. You know? Like, I'm thinking like sagas. I was also thinking like uh, aftermath a little bit, where like it's like a one-time effect. So the only reason I say that is because it's sort of like, and I this is. 
partially coming from i watched the professor's like prediction video okay and i kind of understand like i'm with him where he's coming from with this so because it's like the page is turning in a book like that's my if they're picturing a book on the card like it's the page turn it's a story thing like cool um my thought is it's not gonna be it's got to be like a one-time effect like you don't go back in the story it's got to be you know what i mean like it's got to be just a one-time thing but i don't know like is it a it can't be just a casting cost because they could just say you can only activate this once they've done that before why would you need a whole new mechanic for that so i aftermath was the thing where like it if it met a certain condition you could use this effect one time granted in a it was like graveyard interaction i don't necessarily think it's going to be it's not going to be graveyard interaction for sure i would imagine but maybe not specifically maybe no but like something along those lines where like once it meets a certain requirement then you can do this other effect that's actually literally what i was thinking yeah that yeah, kind yeah. of almost to almost like finish the story like progress yeah. the story yourself, i mean that's exactly you know? it um and a lot of people are comparing it to like level up i don't necessarily think it's going to be like level up where well because that was just mana cost right and i think that that only affected that specific creature and so i think Usually, this could yeah. be like different effect i don't think that this has to be tied to that specific creature so if it is a story kind of makes sense that that's the character it's affecting and stuff like that so maybe there is an argument there i I don't know yeah um but regardless that's actually i think going to be one of the more interesting things to see from this is that mechanic i agree um yeah it it looks cool i like the art for it um i really like the card frame for it i i mean usually with these things i start off not liking them i thought sagas looked busy yeah and then the more i played with them the more i was like yeah they're fine yeah they're sagas they're fine so i'm sure this will be fine once i play them once i have it in my hand yeah 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 that's fair i didn't like sagas either at first but i think they're good uh well the professor actually did predict that sagas were going to be in this set that would make sense. I think it's a storytelling element. Right. I mean, I like sagas sense. as a concept. I think they work pretty well as a storytelling element. Yeah. I didn't think they would be all that like, I don't want to say good, like in gameplay, because mm. obviously like history of Inalia, that's just going to be good. But like, right. But Mirage Conjecture 2 was good. I mean, yeah, that's what I'm saying. But like, I didn't expect them to be as impactful as they were, I guess sure. is what I would say. Um, sure. Because they were pretty impactful. I mean, we I saw think a they lot were great. Of i mean i was convinced after the fact for sure yeah um and again like you said i think as a storytelling element they're great i think they were perfect they worked very well um i did not i was not a fan of the like art i like the art style itself like the stained glass art thing was really cool and some of them and stuff like that and like the art looked good it's just you could barely see it because it was tiny that's what you're saying (laughs) right that's the part that i was i wasn't like 100 percent about but yeah. once i again once i started playing with them it was, I was still cool yeah, yeah yeah they just seemed like neat cards you yeah, know definitely. Um, but no i really like them i like that mechanic a yeah. lot yeah yeah a lot a lot i think they can use it and what was cool using it in dominaria um again is like a one of yeah, set. We're yeah just visiting it for a second uh they do get to kind of use it again yeah like out yeah yeah, yeah. in the wild west of magic's design scape <laughs> you know yeah, yeah, yeah which is cool um, definitely um yeah. to finish up what's in these packs also uh three non-foil special frame cards these are those showcase cards or borderless planeswalkers as well mm-hmm. uh just in non-foil version yeah. and then one non-foil ancillary am i saying that correctly ancillary yeah. ancillary uh card uh so that's like the buy box card a new planeswalker from the planeswalker decks or a yeah. brawl card from the brawl decks they're doing one card you couldn't get from the regular set yeah but it doesn't mean you have to buy like the brawl decks to right. get some of the brawl cards and right, stuff right, right. um so that's pretty cool and then a foil token uh which i've actually Me- really enjoyed the the new tokens i think they look great. i do too i very um, much like the new tokens they start them in modern masters and they did the or modern, modern masters horizons. <laughs> right, modern right. horizons right 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 uh and then also did them in uh 2020 mm-hmm. and they do look great they really do yeah um i agree the, they look very nice to have a foil token is cool it's just an added bonus like i'm sure. super super down for that sure. um but yeah, uh, there will be boxes of these. The the boosters, there will only be 12 of them in a box, but right. obviously they're premium stuff, so it'll be pretty fun to to open that up. Hopefully we'll get the opportunity. Yeah. Um, I did mention the Brawl decks. They are still pushing Brawl. And uh, Did, please, someone tell me if anyone played Brawl. So Kevin and I did not. No, we didn't. Uh, and there are memes everywhere about how, like, Watsy's pushing this dead horse it just, into... And it's just, it's, it's so... St- it, I mean, here, okay, here's the thing, though. And yes. again, 
this is coming from the professor's video that he was because he talked about this a little bit too and i don't mean yeah, to yeah, recycle yeah. his content but i do again i kind of agree with him on this uh-huh he's like nobody plays brawl like it's True. a it's a very pointless format yeah i'm sure someone out there somewhere plays it and if you're listening great enjoy well it. some one person but you need three others you need so. three other uh so good luck finding friends um but <laughs> um uh he was like you know if they're gonna keep this in mind as like a format yeah it's kind of okay because all that means is we get more cards and some of them will be viable in like commander so like who cares like if they're gonna keep pushing it as a separate product that's fine because there will be brawl only cards and things like that like it's fine it's it doesn't hurt anything to have it it's just really dumb to have it like that's my take yeah no it doesn't hurt yeah i mean i agree it doesn't hurt anything at all um all it's giving us is extra cards, which I can't complain about. Right. You know I mean, that's I mean? fine. Right. Uh, they just, just they just gave a perfectly good kitchen table format anxiety is all they did. Like, they made it so <laughs> you're complicated. So right. <laughs> you're so right. Like, oh two-headed God, giant didn't need any help. I'm going to no. be honest. But... Oh, my God. That's really funny. Um, it's fine, though. If, if they want to keep throwing money at Brawl, that's cool with me. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> I, I'm maybe one day I'll play it. I well, okay. If there was an event going on, yeah, at Grand Slam or something, it was like Brawl Night. Yeah, five dollar entry, nothing crazy. I mean, I'd be sure. like Kev, we should we maybe, should probably let's go, play. go play just for funsies. But then I have to take time to build a Brawl deck. <laughs> I'd have to remember what like <laughs> Brawl specific rules there are and all that. Yeah, it's just that's too much work. Oathbreaker uh, is kind of <sighs> taking off though. People are playing a lot of Oathbreaker in Brawl. No, no, no. That's a separate format. But it's like it's what sort of like Commander. Man? Do you know? I mean, do you know what Oathbreaker mm-hmm. is? Okay, so I don't. I it's no similar idea. to Commander, but your Commander is a Planeswalker. Always, if okay. I'm understanding this, please correct me in the comments because I haven't played it yet. I've just heard a lot about it, and Never a lot heard. of people seem to love it. Okay. Um, but your Planeswalker is basically your Commander, and then okay. your Planeswalker has a signature spell, quote unquote, that you also lay out with your Planeswalker Commander, whatever. Okay. And so same tax applies to both of these cards but you can replay your planeswalker as your commander and you can replay your spell as your signature spell okay but then there's the tax on top of it so like if you supreme verdict for instance is my signature as your signature spell your first time you just cast it for normal cost next time you add two to it but you can continually replay it as a board sweeper which is pretty big impact you know what i mean and so there's like a lot of people have been playing that and it apparently seems to be that sounds like a lot of fun it also sounds like i could break it way too easy that's my thing is like i feel like there's a lot of interesting ways that you could you're telling me if if i use like teferi Mm -hmm. as my oath breaker Mm -hmm. use supreme verdict Mm -hmm. i can just like dead eye navigator combo for infinite man oh no no, no. it's only um i don't think you have access to the full like commander oh i think the it might be just standard cards or something like that but i don't know i don't know about that uh anymore somebody correct me because i don't know i'm not saying you're wrong i'm saying that sounds less fun uh it's still a pretty substantial card pool and people seem to like it i'll have to look look into Maybe it Maybe like modern only. correct me please I'll in the comment section below because i i haven't played it yet you've piqued my interest yeah it i mean it looks fun Paid. it's something we ought to try i guess um all of this to say uh throne of eldraine looks pretty sweet. looks pretty good they're it's trying a lot sweet. of new stuff which i'm into agreed, um, agreed. i think it's gonna be a fun set i really yes. like the idea of camelot with like brothers grim fairy tales yeah um, it looks cool and little goldilocks is but eh. killer <laughs> eh. it's just it's kind of gimmicky I've, but like yeah I i've never been it. a fan of the whole like here's something that's supposed to be sweet oh but it's stab stuff well that's i mean i don't i just don't like it it's like there's grim that's like all their it's all like dark yeah. stuff well it's all dark stuff but yeah, like yeah. goldilocks isn't like a murderer in brothers grim well no no, no. she gets that's eaten fair. that's fair red riding hood gets eaten yeah a lot of the times the kids get eaten. <laughs> yeah it all ends I'm the opposite saying. way that you think it does <laughs> like or that no. you think it should right like you, did what? i text you no 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 no, no. Oh, okay <laughs> i just saw my name <laughs> and got oh no, no no i just never opened your previous message um but we digress anyway no i yeah. just i'm never like a I'm not a fan of like, but, like Chucky is like a here's a doll, but it kills you. Yeah, no, that's kind of stupid. I but don't care, man. Like here's a little girl, but she hunts bears. Does she? 
does she? It's the world of magic. Cool. <laughs> Speaking of the world of magic, I'm going to go off on a tangent really quick. Okay. Because we haven't yet this episode. <laughs> um, no. <laughs> uh, you know about this, but okay. I've been reading uh, the magic novels. I finally picked them up. I bought a Kindle recently, and I've enjoyed my Kindle. No! Oh, shit. Shut up. I just spilled coffee. Um, no, but I've been reading yeah. the the Brothers War. Tell me this. Did your virginity come back? Yeah. <laughs> did it get I like that you assumed I lost it. It get re- <laughs> <laughs> Um Man, this is already just going so well. Yes. Um, no, I, I enjoy it. It's it's entertaining. I mean it's not I've amazing. I've heard they are much better. They are, they they were are much better loads in the past. better in the past. No, yeah, yeah, than they are now. So I did a. Uh, granted, this is comics, yeah. so it's different. But like, I read some of the mm-hmm. the original comics, mm-hmm. and I touched on a few of the new ones as well with uh, Andrew and like his thing. What did you say, uh, Urza was doing at the very end, or not Urza? Um, do what? You said something about who's the bad guy at the very end? Who's in it for Ulam? No, Ulamog. Yeah, totally. It's a. Uh, what are you talking about? So at the very end, the very last panel of the comic you read, there's a bad guy. Oh yes, it was it Gix maybe? No, or uh, dude from Phyrexia, but I can't. I thought that. I thought I it don't was, remember. I thought it was one of the brothers. Whatever, but you no, said it wasn't he was one doing of the something. I'm pretty sure it was Gix because I just read the part mm-hmm. in the novel that is like tied to this, but. Yeah, it literally just like flashed a panel of him, and then he's never seen again. Right, <laughs> it's like really. He's just stupid. scheming. What did you say he was doing? <laughs> oh, I don't remember how I phrased it. Was it was very. It funny. was really good. <laughs> oh my god, we need to get back on that episode and find it. Um, yeah. Anyway, right. Uh, I'm just saying the novels on Kindle are like five bucks, which is way too expensive. But if you got five bucks and you want to read a novel, I think you should try it. Ooh, if you got five bucks, you should become a patron. Actually, yeah, <laughs> that's a stop. much better option. And don't read a, a bad book. Please become a patron. Please support us. Um, anyway, yeah, Thrones going to be cool. Thrones uh, cool. <laughs> we have another topic to yeah, go do. into today i think we're done with throne is we're that done with suffice throne. to say uh, all right yeah we we're... don't have a ton of info on it yet no so. um so we're gonna make this one we're gonna like maybe make it a two-parter i don't know That'd i should probably fine. like talk to you about it first but uh <laughs> this is your topic true so really quick we'll just kind of give our uh our own perspectives about limited so limited as a format we haven't talked about in a little while yeah and we've each been playing more and more of it recently yeah um I've been playing a lot of sealed. I haven't done as much yeah. draft. But. I love draft. Draft is my preferred. Over it sealed. used to be, and I think it still is. But like mm. with M twenty, I've just I happen to do a lot of sealed yeah. stuff, and like I've really enjoyed sealed for yeah. M twenty. I did do a couple drafts, but I just I just like draft more. That's fair. Um, for whatever reason, I've played a lot of fantasy sports, so I, I'm used to drafting a lot. I've drafted Magic a lot. Yeah. There's just a lot of uh, a lot of different ways that I draft things, so it's a comfortable format for me. Sure. Um, but with that, there's a whole subset of like magic theory and, and strategy oh, yeah, yeah. that goes into it. Um, then we haven't talked about it in a while. We haven't touched on it about what our favorites are, if anything's changed, if yeah, you know, it, our recent experiences, et cetera, et cetera. So briefly for the people, what we're gonna do is talk to you about. How, what we like about draft, what we don't like about draft, how we kind of approach a draft. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we're going to draft M20. We're going to do a little a mock draft, as yeah. it were. Now, we know you guys can't see it, but uh, we do have a draft simulator up. And yeah, so we're yeah. going to run through a pack or two and just kind of... Three, very, literally. Three, literally. And we're just going to kind of say some of the key cards in there and then be yep. able to go through it and stuff like that. So, And we'll explain mm. why. But, um, yeah, you mentioned some of the things yep. that we... Well, we've talked about them before, but like yeah. quadrant theory is one of, I think, the best tools that you can possibly have okay. um, in your arsenal for draft. So mm. draft, in my opinion, is a really good way to like take a card and really like evaluate it at all points of the game. And that's what quad- sure. quadrant theory is saying you should do. Yeah. And so correct me if I'm wrong. There's the the early turns in the game. Is this card mm-hmm. useful in the early turns of the game? Is it useful uh, for board stall position? Yeah. Uh, is it useful when you're already winning the game? Mm-hmm. 
And then what's the last one? If you're losing. If you're losing, that's right. Uh, and so you kind of put a singular card into all of these quadrants and determine, is it good here, here, mm -hmm. here, and here? See where it fits, right? Yeah. Uh, and if it really isn't good in most of these quadrants, then it's probably not the right card to draft. It's probably not a good card. Right. It's probably not a good card. If right. it's good in all these, then it's probably a great card. So, And then there's yeah. obviously in between. Um, mm -hmm. But I think it's such a good way to evaluate things because one thing that I found myself doing uh, quite a lot was early on when I would start drafting, I was like, well, I'm just going to take the powerhouse cards, you know, because they're great. But some of them were only really good if you are already winning the game. Okay. And not sure. good in, like, general gameplay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And so you find yourself, Certainly. like, with all these powerful cards in mm. your hand doing mm. absolutely nothing. And it's like, mm, that's I think not... a, lot, a lot of new players, I think, will fall into that trap. It's of a bit of a trap, yeah. They see a 7-7 seven, seven or an 8-8 eight, eight trampler, yeah, and, and they're like... just assume it's good, but... Well, he's common. I'm going to draft four of them. Yeah. And it's like, eh. Like, that's not... You should, but... Not four. Slow down no, there, Buckaroo. Yeah, yeah, not, yeah. not first pick. No. no, no Stuff no. like that. Um, so quadrant theory is yeah. a really great way, in my opinion, to, mm -hmm. to kind of look and evaluate a singular card and figure out, what is it going to be good yeah. at all points of the game mm -hmm. is the idea. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's good. So I like I like using quadrant theory a lot of times um, before I'll go into a draft. Mm. Um, I think it's good to know kind of your pool, yeah. like, the, like the set. Mm -hmm. um, for something super casual, you don't need to like don't go out and Study learn conspiracy. The, yeah. Like you don't need <laughs> yeah. to you don't need to get super intense. But if you're gonna like I know people who will gauntlet pre release mm -hmm. and like do the sealed event and then they'll have draft events afterwards. So yeah. do they'll like play all day. Yeah. Uh for like for a bunch of cards, a bunch of money, stuff mm -hmm. like that. So uh if I'm doing something like that, I like to know the card pool ahead of time. Um and that's kind of when I'll use quadrant theory is mm -hmm. when I'm planning um kind of my grades on a card sure. or not um m20 is a good example there's um some removal that's really good yeah and some removal that's like less good yeah like bone splinters yeah it's is like, like is fine removal it's efficient but you got a sack of creatures so it's not always useful. exactly stuff like and that. in some case like that's where you have to be dependent on like evaluating cards mm -hmm. like that where you're dependent on other cards you, in the quadrant theory. You right. have to account for that because so many times you'll pick a powerhouse card that depends on another card to be good. Right. And that's part of why like um, enchant creatures and things like that are a little bit weaker, are a little in... bit weaker in draft right. because you're opening yourself up for that two for one. Mm -hmm. Now I will say in like M20 specifically, yeah, there's one that's a five drop. It's four and a green puts a two, two wolf on the battlefield and equips a creature. Yeah, like that's a pretty great card because on its own, it's, it's two giving it two one, for right. one value. So you're evening out. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's where the differences in that kind of a thing can kind of. You're right. In. That's yeah. 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 You don't want to, you know, it's something is automatically weaker if it needs another resource. Yeah, basically. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's also there's other removal that's better. Um, yeah. though, like I was saying. Um, and so I'll use, I'll kind of, I'll, I'll use quadrant theory to kind of judge that. Mm -hmm. Um, so there's more flexible spells there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but getting prepared for draft is part of it, like knowing all the cards, mm -hmm. knowing that I'm I'm really big on this card. I think this is a good strategy or I'm not super comfortable drafting here. I don't want to do that. Yeah. Knowing that's good before you open your pack. But once you have your pack open, what do you do? Yeah. Uh, is there a like streamlined, comfy way to think about the cards in front of you? Mm -hmm. I think there is. Uh, bread is something that gets thrown around a lot. Yeah. Bread to me is pretty much uh, the your standard for what you want to think of when you open a pack. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of your, at least for me, it's my way to say, all right, my deck needs all of these things to be, in my opinion, a good limited deck. Mm -hmm. We're going to start with B-R-E-A-D mm -hmm. and go down the list. And I'm kind of checking those boxes off. Yeah. Obviously, the biggest tip that underpins any limited strategy is remain flexible. Yeah. Um, you, Keep yourself as open as possible. Absolutely. You're never going to find the like the the perfect card that you want yeah. to make your deck tick um it's about what can you make from literally these limited resources well uh, and i'll say this yeah. something that comes up a lot when i'm doing the crack packs for instance mm -hmm. is like i'll be stuck between like two cards because if you don't know if you don't watch that series we open packs from all over oh uh, yeah all the back, magic's history back through fourth edition i believe is as far as we've gone back whoop, whoop. yeah it's been fun um regardless we also go through it as if we're drafting that pack so this is like our pack yeah. one pick one what are we going to take and so we go through and evaluate every single card 
And what I find myself doing a lot of the times is picking between two particular cards. And in fact, this came up when I was opening up a pack of 2020 uh, last week on Friday. And it was between a really, really good elemental card. Okay. Uh, I say really good, a somewhat good elemental card. It was the overgrowth elemental. That's three, two for two and a green makes that elemental deck pretty good. Like it's a solid card. It's even good in just a green deck. Like it's not bad elsewhere, but it's obviously at its best in the elemental deck. Certainly. And then a meteor golem, which goes in literally any deck. And I was like, I I mean, I have to take meteor golem because it leaves you open. It leaves you more flexible and things like that. Some people prefer to take stuff like that elemental a little bit earlier because it gives you a direction. Right. And there, I get that argument, but I also, my preference is to stay as open mm-hmm. as possible. And so taking an artifact that also swings the board in your favor that quickly is a pretty big hit for me. Well, so I just, I think you made the right call personally. Yeah. Um, I mean, I just think that's a better card. Exactly. Like, I think it's a better card. But, but those were clearly the top two in sure. that pack. And so, like, I wanted to give yeah. some and reasonable I mean, explanation as to why. You're usually going to be down. There's going to be, like two two or three cards i'd say yeah i would say like pick two and three you're gonna have a few choices of what yeah, you can go with um there are decisions like that to yeah. make but so bread what is bread uh do you know what bread stands for the acronym i know some of it <laughs> bombs first yeah. bombs big cards that come in and affect the game mm-hmm. whether it's a giant creature that comes in and, and, and changes the like has an etb effect that does crazy stuff comes in and removes things meteor goal right <laughs> meteor goal exactly um or Planeswalker is mm-hmm. a great bomb. Mm-hmm. Um, stuff like that. Something that is a must answer or like applies will, will pressure. the game. Right. In a big way. Uh, removal is the R for bread. Removal is uh, quintessential to limited. Uh, and you'll find it's harder in certain colors than others to get good removal. <laughs> yes. Curious. Yes. Weird. Uh, and every <laughs> each color does removal in a different way. Yeah. Sort of. Um, li- for limited especially, but sort of. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a lot of most colors have like a destroy target thing, but uh, some might have different stipulations. Like you might have to pay life for black mm-hmm. or sack a creature, for instance, mm-hmm. in black. Um, then the E stands for uh, evasion mm-hmm. or efficient spells. One of the two. I've seen it. Yeah. Seen it kind of go it either way. Um, and this is this is a little bit confusing, I think, for for people who haven't heard this before, um, because it's not necessarily one or the other. Uh, bread is just a ranking system of like of a valuable card. Yeah. And what your deck needs. It needs great bombs, good removal, and then all this other stuff is valued. So evasive creatures are, you know, things with flying. Yeah. Uh, things that are unblockable. Things mm-hmm. with protection. Something that makes it harder to Sets kill. Sets them apart a little bit from right. just an average creature. Yeah, yeah. It's not necessarily like uh, it's it's not any evergreen ability. It's not like you know, I want to get all oh, creatures the first strike and stuff like that. Yeah. No, that's not true. That's, that's actually coming next, technically. But uh, <laughs> it's creatures that can apply pressure, um, but remain elusive. Hard yeah. to kill. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if they can avoid combat and still deal damage, that's excellent. Um, pingers. That's right. why pingers are so good. Exactly. A, uh, the A stands for aggro, aggressive creatures. Mm-hmm. Um, this is where you'd fit uh, vanilla dudes, two twos for two, three threes yeah. for three. Um, cards that while don't do anything special just yeah. provide a valuable body something to think about um you are going to win the your game of limited on the board uh, 99.9 percent of the time i promise yeah. you uh it probably won't come down to a combat trick yeah. i have burned out somebody once in limited uh we flung somebody out we in, did oh bro God. mono mono yes, red it's mono red fling and it worked that very was well heck of fun that was very very fun we're not family friendly anymore that was fucking fun dude <laughs> <laughs> that was great yeah, was i forgot time. about fling fling is an excellent card yeah um i mean um yeah yeah I was... <laughs> <laughs> you're right though um but aggressive creatures for a this yeah. is your hasty boys first strike Double strike isn't a league of its own. That should be valued yeah. much higher than yeah. a lot of other things. But uh, regardless, this is the the category where these guys are going to be dangerous. Yep. Then you have D. D is drag. <laughs> it's trash. D, yeah. D is the stuff you get the past that you never play, yeah. that you're going to cut, that you know you're going to cut. Yeah. Um, you just don't draft the D stuff. This is like pick 13 in a pack. 14 yeah. should mostly yeah, yeah. be drag. You, if you're getting drag and like you're on pick like, 
nine ten. You should maybe. It's either a crappy pack a crappy or your pack deck doesn't or, have direction. Yeah, you're not in a good place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's always a good signal as to like, yeah. if you don't know what you're doing by that point, maybe you should. Sure. Um, and I will say this, not to go backwards too much, but uh, with your aggro point uh, sure. curve consideration, in particular with M20, I mean, any limited set, it's going to be very, very important. You should always consider your curve, uh, which just means that yeah. you want like a couple one drops, a few more two drops. Three and four are going to be like your big kind of the majority of your deck, most yes, likely. Definitely. And then from there on out, generally speaking, you're talking about bombs and you definitely want some of those, but you don't want them to be the majority of your deck. So you, no. you end up with this like bell curve, upside down bell curve, however you want to look at it. But um, I forget what it's called, but there's a big word for it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but regardless, yeah. in in core sets, not only M20, I mm. will say that is almost more important than anything else the curve. is just having a good curve. Uh, because so often, and I've found mm. this to be very, very true with M20 in particular, if I just curve out, even if my threats aren't amazing, they're yeah. still threats. And a lot of times people just don't have anything to play. And right. like in a core set where things are a little bit underpowered because it, I mean, it's the intro set, like that's kind of the idea. Yeah. Unless they just happen to get a really big bomb, you can oftentimes just win by curving out. And like, yeah. it almost doesn't matter what you're playing at that point. Like, that is, it's one, that's one reason why I prefer to draft. Um, my, my two favorite ways to draft yeah. are either blue white flyers because mm -hmm. it's usually an archetype in a lot of sets. Right now. Um, or, uh, reactive aggro stuff. So I, uh, not to get into too many specifics. It's fine. Uh, yeah. the blue white flyers deck is really sweet yes. in M20. But if it has a flagship uncommon, which yeah, is a whole other thing to that talk about. That is a whole other thing. You should look at your uncommons and see the flagships, especially on a core set. Yeah, but do that. We'll do that ahead of time. Yeah. Before you draft, you want to know what the flagships are. You need to know the are. archetypes, yeah, yeah. like 100%. Uh, but honestly, I found green red to be like yeah. way overpowered. Hmm. Like it's just super, super strong. There is a green red elemental. Yeah, is it the, that? It is or... the elemental deck. Okay. Which yeah, it, yeah. I mean, it generally falls into the elemental deck, and there is blue that can also be splashed in. Um, but like if you can get a solid green red deck, like the the four drop brawler, the two four that just gets buffed for every other elemental you have oh, is yes. like ridiculous. Yeah. And there is a little combo with that goblin thing that makes it unblockable right it's sweet there's a bunch of anyway yeah <laughs> elementals is pretty strong it's real um, good that is also our only like i dropped things <laughs> uh the elementals is our only like i'd say sub standard not substandard but like alternative kind of archetype you know we we don't have another tribe you know in uh M20. in stand oh in m20 in m20 in standard there's a bunch but yeah, i was gonna say like for limited you know sometimes you'll have like a vampire's a yeah i mean there is like whatever but yeah there's like a small vampire theme but like not really though. not if you have enough. soren yeah that's the thing like you have to have soren but soren's a really mythic so, yeah. soren's just a bomb you don't actually yeah i played with soren one time mm -hmm. um honestly a little underwhelming and limited still did, good did you have vampires uh i didn't have enough to make him great yeah. um and that was the problem but yeah. like without that vampire support with soren it's mm -hmm. like yeah i mean he's, he's good right. he's yeah. very good you should play yeah. him always he's a uh, cheap planeswalker but yeah. like yeah not great yeah let's let's get into this mock yeah, draft a little sorry. bit just Go to put some meat to our words here so <clears throat> we are looking at from m20 planar cleansing is our rare manifold key god's willing Aether Gust, and then we get into our commons. Uh, Infuriate, Gorging Vulture, Conv Convolute, Leafkin Druid, Blade Brand, Scourge Spinner, Befuddle, Lavakin Brawler, Wolfkin Bond, Soul Salvage, Thornwood Falls. So, first thing to do is look at your rare always. And this is where you'll find most uh, I bombs. Don't love this pack. I don't love this pack either. This pack, pack is pretty bad. Yeah. Um, so. The first thing that I'm going to look for then, if I don't have a crispy rare, is do I have any bombs? Well, should we talk about... I mean, the rare is not, I don't think, the pick here. I right? do not either. But generally speaking, I, I mean, sweepers are very powerful effects, but in limited, where you're also going to be playing a lot of creatures, generally, right. I don't find them to be as one-sided and as powerful as you would expect them to be. Right. Um, that's not always the case. There are going to be instances where it'll be good, but like generally speaking i i don't find it good and our uncommons here the manifold key very underwhelming it doesn't do that much in limited god's willing 
actually okay, but not great. I've seen it played in a few decks. I shy yeah. away from it. God's Willing is super. Not pick <clears throat> one, but God's Willing is very, very good. Yeah, just to be able um, to protect something is good. And then Aether Gust, very, very specific. Uh, it's much more of a sideboard card. Yeah. There's a whole cycle of just like really good sideboard yeah. hate that you should pick up, but not this early. Um, so sure. there's really not a great pick here. Um, I would go Brawler. I think uh, the brawler is brawler. the lava king brawler. The lava king brawler. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to overstate it by any means, but it's such an aggressive four drop. Uh, if you're yep. in the right deck, it's fantastic. Having like we have the scorch spitter uh, in here as well that we would hope to either wheel or the leaf can druid, which would also mm -hmm. be quite good. Yeah. Uh, to help follow that up, but like I just feel like that's such an aggressive four drop. Yeah. Uh, that. If you can pick up a few elementals, it's going to be at its best. No, I agree. I think for four, it's fine. Um, it's tacking for three every turn, which is great. Yeah. Um, it's good enough. Uh, not great to start off with a comment. Definitely pick. not. This is not the <laughs> this is not the pack that you want to see. No. Um, now, a quick note: Planar Cleansing is excellent, <laughs> but to Kevin's point, it destroys all permanents. This is great if you're losing the game. It is terrible yeah. in every that's other exactly. instance. Yeah, that's exactly so, right. Not awesome. So that'll be our pick. Yep. Next, <laughs> Leyline of Abundance made it through, but that's not great. So bad. Uh, so we got Goblin Ringleader, Bark Hide Troll, Ripscale Predator, Feral Abomination, Winged Words, Inspiring Captain, Another Leafkin Druid, Bone to Ash, Feral Invocation, Mind Rot, Healer of the Glade, and Dawning Angel. So uh, we i'm interested to see what you think so i'm looking for any removal now um just because that's yeah the next yeah, thing yeah. that i like um i don't see any no i i'm kind of between two cards now since we are already in red a goblin ringleader is a great card but it's not necessarily it's an not, excellent card in limited so no, it's not it's not awesome to me there's two picks here it's kind of a it's an in-between here so the bark eyed troll and rip scale predator are my or what so I'm, in I'm very similar the troll is i think the correct pick mm -hmm. uh because it's just the most value for the mana cost sure uh the predator is also a good finisher like i i would be fine with that it's a bomb right yeah I mean, it is a bomb it's um, it's evasive it's a six five absolutely uh for six um, on curve that's nice that's that's very nice Go ahead. um i oh I, I missed the abomination uh i don't think it's the abomination um I just don't think it's that something to consider. I it is a consideration, I but don't I think, think the predator is way better. Yep. And we're already in that color. Right. Uh, uh, it's not the pick, uh, but it's worth mentioning that there is a leafkin druid here for the elementals deck. And if you can ramp out mm -hmm. as much as possible in that deck, you tend to do fairly well. Sure. Um, there is the the healer of the glade as well, which is also an elemental. Right. I'm only pointing those out because we have the elementals matters card. You know what I mean? Sure. Um, and so I think that is something that you should be looking for. Mm -hmm. But I do think the bark hide troll is the most value for the mana cost, and it's just a very strong two drop. Like I think so as well. Um, however, the predator really has my eye since they're already in those colors. Mm. Um. But you do want to think about other bombs in which you'll probably see. Bark Eye Trolls is an uncommon. That's the Rip thing. Scale and is a common. The Predator you expect to see probably coming back. Maybe not coming not back. Not in this but pack, like but At some point, you'll probably see. It will see. be drafted, so yeah. we will lose on that. But I think the Bark Eye Troll, agreed, is the right choice. Um, if not just to put us in, uh, like, Gruel Aggro stuff. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> wow. Wayline of Combustion is Crazy. our... Uh, Okay, so uh, we have the ley line. We have for uncommons. We still have dragon mage, yep. and then thought distortion. Thought distortion is absolutely garbage. Just so yep. you know, that yes. card is terrible. Agreed. Uh, as far as commons that I would look at, Chandra's Ember Cat mm -hmm. uh, is definitely something that I would be interested in. Um, very solid two drop for the elementals deck, and yep. it can ramp you. Very very good. Sure. Uh, we're already in red as well, so that's perfect. Yeah. Um, Dragon Mage, I'm not as stoked about. It's been really? very underwhelming. Really? Uh, for me, yeah, because at seven mana, you do get a five five flyer, which is good. Yeah. Uh, and you do, you know, do the wheel effect where you get to draw seven cards and everything, which is really good as well. Yeah. I've I've had not the uh, maybe I just had bad experiences with it, but I've found it gets outpowered in the air pretty easily, actually. Um, or 
because of all the enchantments and stuff like that people mm. throw like one of the the giant spiders out and then just enchant it and then it can't swing in like it can't do the damage that you expect it will but again that's just personal experience so, so i don't want to say that that's necessarily the right thing here's how you look at bombs in my mind yeah there's always an answer to a bomb oh yeah, yeah. i'm saying that make... happens because there's flying is so prevalent though right. there's a lot of hate for that and so it makes no it more harder to make flying corset. no more than like i would argue there's more i don't think there is i mean because flying is such a big archetype for this like yeah. i would definitely say that there's more um, I mean, there's a bunch of reachy spiders. There's a bunch of like kill stuff that yeah. has flying in green. Like there's the five five with reach in green that spits out a two two. Yeah. There's like a I'm, bunch there's of stuff like better that. answers than we've ever gotten, but that yeah. doesn't make it. That doesn't mean there's more hate. That's still just. I'm like, just saying for me, it's not gotten through very often, and I've played it a number of times. Sure, uh, that's personal experience. So I don't know if that's necessarily the correct thing or not. So I would honestly if, pick the Ember Cat. I mean, so the question becomes, what deck are we in? If it's the elemental deck, I think it's the Amber Cat. Yeah. Uh, that being said, a 5-5 five, five flyer, pretty good. I, you're leading the draft, so you do your thing. I would draft Dragon Mage, 100%. That's fair, if that's 100%. what you want to do. I would go Ember Cat, personally, because I would shoot for that elementals with the Brawler, but that's just personal. I feel you. Um, uh, but we will probably, hopefully, see another Amber Cat. Maybe. It's a common. It's a common uh all right so we're on to the next pack uh kethis the hidden hand <laughs> corpse knight centaur courser vile of dragonfire stone golem daybreak pack. champion inspiring captain disenchant epicure of blood growth cycle then and sleep paralysis. paralysis we are ignoring sleep paralysis obviously yeah we're um, in there so there's not a ton here for you i mean you could choose one of two things maybe it's Corsair or Stone Golem, really? Uh, I was thinking Corsair. The Growth Cycle is a fairly good combat trick. If you can pick them up, it's one or two of them, you're pretty, pretty well set. Um, I think that's actually the pick here. Do I think that's yeah, the pick here? I would maybe go Corsair just for curve stuff. Yes, I think it's Corsair, um, actually. As the Growth I'm... Cycle's fine, but you can usually pick those up pretty late. Yeah, I don't want a combat trick. It's a combat trick. Pack, yeah. pack four, yeah. Okay. Um, well, speak of the devil. Mammoth Spider? Yeah, that's who I was thinking of. Mammoth Spider's in so many. Yeah. Corsets, though. He's in like. Oh, no, I know, but a there's bunch. a lot more enchantment stuff in this set, which people tend to throw on the spider just because it can block flyers. So you get um, Scheming Symmetry, Fencing Ace, Mammoth Spider, Infuriate, uh, Sage's Road, Denizen, Dagger, Sail, Airy Knot, Disenchant, Negate, Stone Golem again, and some Skeleton Boy. I mean, Mammoth Spider seems like the clear yeah. pick to me. Um, the only other option would have been the Acrobat, but I don't love that. I think it's a pretty bad card. The Arianaut, this guy? Arianaut, excuse me, not the Acrobat. Uh, um, yeah, this is it kind of... pseudo-flying. Yeah, which is I weird, don't like this card. But um, yeah, it's pretty bad. <laughs> a 3-2 for 4 um, with flying sometimes. A 3-2 for 4 with flying I think is fine. It's okay. Pseudo-flying, though, is not. No, agreed. Yeah. Um, so I don't like it. Yeah. Um, I... So the spider is a consideration. Let's check our curve real quick here. I mean, we're fine. We're to... early in the pack, too. I mean, early in the draft, I yeah, should yeah, say. Yeah, we're fine to pack. pick the spider, I think. It's just a solid card. It'll block yeah. for enough of stuff. So and generally, you'll stuff. go late enough that yeah, yeah. that'll be fine. All right. Next oh, pack, uh, Sleep got... Paralysis, Unsummon, Sorcerer of the Fang, Feral Invocation, Ferocious Pup, Moment of Heroism, Negate, Undead Servant, and Destructive Digger. I there, There's really two here. There's two, right? Um, yeah okay. i'm gonna no i'm gonna be honest pup is a trap um he is not a trap for three i promise you he's not so the reason for being three though. no no no. uh there's um oh, i can't think of the card if it's a synergy there no there is a synergy thing but it's a very easy synergy to pull off and i can't think of uh God, i'm trying to think of it regardless i found it to be quite good trap is a trap is a little bit aggressive yeah uh, i definitely think that's aggressive ferocious <laughs> Ferocious Pup isn't that good, though. I think it's definitely better than you're giving it credit. I don't think it's amazing. It's still so just it's a, a three drop. But it is like, a chump blocker and a two two. Yeah, that's it though. No, uh, fair. That's and I'm all. not saying it's amazing. I'm saying it's I, better I than you're giving good. it credit for. It's not better than Feral Invocation. I will guarantee you that. Okay. So Feral Invocation is an enchantment with flash for yeah. the same that cost gives you as Ferocious Pup. Plus two on a creature. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. That's so. I'm fine with that. I'm not saying that's incorrect. I just think you're undervaluing Ferocious Pup. With that. I don't think it's that good. That might be fair, but I don't think it's that good. Um, and it's certainly it's not better than this enchantment. No, I don't uh, think it's better than the enchantment, but it's pretty good. 
It's really not. I think it is. <laughs> it's really I'm not. telling you, it's good. Um, there's so much. There's so many better things you can do for three. Like even just looking at our, like, maybe not our list right now. I was gonna but, say not our list. <laughs> well, Courser is already better than it though. Um. Okay. Like it. It outpowers the board that Ferocious Pub gives you mm-hmm. for the same mana cost. That's fair. It's more aggressive. I'm not. I'm Are you not gonna, trying to fight you on this. I'm just saying, do you want to sink more investment into a zero one? No, I'm okay. I'm saying that because the token synergy is a very big synergy in this set. Well, okay, so for like that, it's worth it in this set. I'm not saying it's an amazing card on its own. I'm saying what's the token synergy though? There are three like, colors that focus on tokens. It's black, black, green, and white. Right. All three of them can do tokens. Green being right. the main token generator. I um, thought it was black white that was doing no, the most green token does stuff. A lot because of, of all the wolves and stuff like that. Yeah, you yeah, get yeah. a lot more tokens out of green. At least, and again, I don't know every specific card, but that mm. tends to be the case for for what I've found. Okay. And so black does do a lot of it with the zombie stuff. Right. Um, that was my biggest thing. Green black in particular is very very good mm-hmm. with tokens. Um, and I've found just like being able to spread out your board like that is yeah. really really good in this because where where i found a lot of the games to go and i think this is pretty similar for most score sets is you get uh-huh. for a little while for a few turns you tend to get into a board stall position and then you have some kind of go wide effect if you're in that deck generally that puts okay. you over the top um and so having just more bodies on the field mm-hmm. and then having that go wide effect is what makes it good uh, i'm not saying you shouldn't rely on other cards i get that so i understand taking the invocation over it oh 100 all day every i'm day. not i'm not opposed to that but i'm just saying if you were in that deck which we're not then i think the ferocious pup is pretty good the quality of the body is really bad i'm just saying if it was for two i'd love the card mm. A two two for two is fine plus a bonus body I that's think it'd cool be too good if it was at two because you get a two two and a extra chump blocker you chump he doesn't do anything he's a chump blocker though i'm just saying that's fine there's enough like there's enough trample there's enough menace there's enough like there's a lot of stuff that works with it the zero one doesn't matter this is so you talk about you're talking way too long on ferocious pub no we're not this is a great point so for (laughs) your two drop slots your three drop slots being your most important yeah do you like that's not an effect i want to do like for my turn three really it's an under okay so remember yeah like it doesn't feel good to make a smaller body for your mana cost right a three three for three seems fine right yeah unless it comes in and and unless it comes in and does something amazing yeah your two two doesn't do anything when it comes in and that's where your power is. i'm saying the value in this is just having extra bodies because of the go wide effect which (laughs) is worth noting in a set where go wide is a thing if it was a 1-1, one, one, yeah, maybe. No, because you're powering you're up everything. Go In the go-wide strategy, you power up if everything. If there was something that cared about the amount of wolves, cool. There is stuff that cares about the amount of wolves. Well, then that's fine. That's cool. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I don't know that card, Kev. I don't I'm, know. There is stuff. Yes, there is. Here's why Feral Invocation is better. It is better. I'm not arguing that. So with Flash, you do it anytime. Yeah, it's ever. a combat trick that sticks. Right. Which is definitely better. Right. But it's not just a combat trick. No, I'm no, doing it on it sticks on my end step. <laughs> I'm not Nine arguing that feral invocation is worse. You did in the beginning. No, I'm not saying it's worse. We're uh, on to the next pack. Yes, it doesn't we matter. Have two picks here in my mind. Uh, there's growth cycle, yeah. and then there's rugged highlands. If you're looking at like mana uh, considerations, since we're already in sure. red green, I could consider that. Yeah. I think the the growth cycle is probably the pick personally. Yeah, this is. This kind of comes down, I guess, a little bit to your philosophy. Do you want to get like a mana yeah. fixing thing or do you want to get a combat trick? Sure. I'm honestly, I'd prefer the Highlands in this, just being perfectly frank. Okay. Um, it'll make my deck more efficient in the long I run. I think, yeah. I mean, it's that's totally perfectly fine. fine. I don't think there's a really... Growth Cycle is not a... Like, Growth Cycle is awesome. We will see more of them, though, I promise yeah. you. Yeah. No, I think you're right. Um. All right. Well, now it's the pup. <laughs> <laughs> now it's the pup uh the real yeah. yeah it's the only card in color right. that makes any sense the only other thing we have here is the the artifact the two one for two i can't read prismite it. prismite, prismite thank you. yeah uh which um, i think it's quite bad no prismite is bad it's very bad yeah uh it might have a home constructed somewhere but it's like mm, terrible mana fixing. yeah it's like really bad you man. could put it in like the the something of what's the yard of the the, the <clears> land <throat> deck that spits out zombie tokens 
Oh, the escape shift. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. All right, so the butt. All right, God's willing, Ooh. infuriate. Uh, this is our pack. Yeah, um, and I do think Scorch Spitter is the pick here. Um, yeah, it's an efficient one drop. Uh, it works well with the the brawler as well. Um, I mean, yeah. it's just a one drop. I don't want to overvalue it or oversell it. No, it's not a super good card, but it's fine because it's elemental. It makes yeah. it matter. Um, if it was just a lizard for one that did this, I would pick Infuriate over it. Yeah, I think um, you're right. As a combat trick efficiency yeah. thing, but because it's an elemental and that matters here, yeah, we'll pick exactly. that. All right. Um, next, we're back to the Goblin Ringleader, Inspiring Captain, Bone to Ash, Mind Rotten Healer of the Glade. Uh, I, get, I would pick, well, I'll, I'll go, ahead. go ahead. I would say I would pick Healer. Me too. I don't think that the Ringleader is good at all. I don't um, think it's good for us. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, healer is an elemental. Exactly. And three life is nice, actually, exactly. in this set. So. so we get Ley Line of Combustion, Thought Distortion, Natural End, Daybreak Captain here. Um, so honestly, there's, I mean. There's two that you could consider. I would, well, technically three, but I mean, I would take the cliffs just to be able to splash uh, if no, you ever I wanted to because of I the elemental not. deck being teamer. I'd rather pick Ley Line. I'm going to be honest. That's fine. I mean, this pack to me. So you're in drag right now. To me, natural end is a yeah. is a consideration oh, yeah, yeah. because you want to be able to remove some things. But yeah, natural end, you'll probably cut. Mm -hmm. So I'm probably going to make a cut from this pack. Is what I'm thinking. Yeah, no, you know? I definitely agree. I don't think any of these are great. No. Um, Swiftwater Cliff. The only reason I say that is because it leaves you a little bit more open, and that's the only reason I would do it. I... But I don't like any of the cards in draft. So like. Uh, Leyline could do the most for you just off, on the off chance that I need mm. an extra card and I'm not going to cut it. Cool. Mm. Um, I'm not going to draft three colors really ever. Like, and I, I mean, that's fine. I think it works in this set, but that's fine. It does. It works in every set. Yeah. I just think I you think make a works. worse deck personally. Okay. I'm not, I mean, that's fine. I just, I mean, it's I would not prefer always to stick wrong. to two. It's so, not I mean, always... I'm fine with that. Yeah, I yeah. only take that for the fact that, like, if there happened to be a really nice blue elemental for some reason. Sure. Which oh, there oh, are a couple. So, Boreal Elemental is one that comes to mind. Boreal is great. That's kind of what I'm thinking to leave myself open. But sure. But I'm, I'm not in strong contention either sure. way. So, now Value we're just... pick. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> So, Keth is the Hidden Hand, Inspiring Captain, Disenchant. If this was an like, actual draft, it'd be Keth. So, yeah, just okay, whatever. for value. Uh, disenchant, Negate, Undead Servant. Uh, takes an interesting. <laughs> interesting. Okay. All right. Next. Man, our rares are garbage. They, so Ooh. far. Steel Overseer, uh, Yorox, Wave Crasher, Angel Vitality, Unchained Berserker, Feral Abomination, Aerial Assault, Shock, Moat Piranhas, Frost Links, Rip Scale, <laughs> Predator, Winged Words, Blade Brain, Natural End, Vile, Dragonfire. So... Ah, damn it. You were talking about splashing, right? Uh, That's what I was saying. Yeah. <laughs> That's why you take it. Um, I think, though, as of it, as of our colors right now, mm. uh, I would either take Shock or the Berserker. Yeah, so the Berserker is great. Pro White is fine. Um, it's like you get random upside. Yeah, but a 3-1 when it's attacking for 3 is not bad. Yeah, it is not bad. It's fine. Shock, Shock is, is just efficient. <laughs> yes. So the reason I'm taking Shock here, uh, sure. it's efficient, it's removal. Uh, I'm all for it. Yeah. Shock is no, shock yeah, is great. There's no convincing needed on shock for no. sure. Steel Overseer is excellent, but it's way better for constructed. Oh yeah. Um, 100%. Yeah. It's to not, me. Yeah. Oh, God, see again. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> Woo! You, you got to trust me a little bit. Um Listen, I think you take Risen Reef. I think you have to. Risen Reef is, is good way enough. Too good. Yeah, Risen Reef is good <laughs> enough to be <laughs> Wish we had that land right now. <laughs> no, cuz now here's the thing. So now you need to like well i guess because no, it was in the older packs maybe yeah, yeah. <laughs> you no ley line was way better i don't agree with that but that's fun are you um, kidding me being able to play no, ley line in limited serious. was awesome i played it in limited it was not awesome you told me it was I said you it said was it was fine. great i said it was fine it was not amazing <laughs> oh boy all right uh we take risen reef because risen reef is great yeah so the next pack um I mean, I see the pick already. Well, okay, so there are two, really. Uh, I uh, think, yeah, the spider, spider is the right. pick. Yeah, netcaster spider yeah. gives you interaction with flyers, uh, mm -hmm. and it's a solid three drop. Two, three is okay with reach. I'm fine with that. I agree. Uh, um, there's also an unsummon, though. Yeah, and I was looking at that as well. Yeah. Um, and I think that's a good card, but since blue is potentially going to be our splash color, right. um, the spider is definitely solid. Yeah, 
I mean, we're going to make it work now that we have a Risen Reef. And there's Overcome, which is good with the pup. That's part of why Overcome is good. Um, sure, but... Uh, Leafkin Druid, I think, is the pick here. Where are we at? Yes, I um, agree. We have no red cards. Uh, we do have a Veil of Summer and Overcome. We're not really in the go-wide deck. Uh, Leafkin Druid is an elemental. It ramps us. It's in our colors. I think that's mm -hmm. definitely the pick. Um, there is a Bami rare here, but it's very uncastable for us. Uh, that's the thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Villa's Broker of Blood would have been in, like my first pick oh yeah so if it was in our opening pack right. we would have been in a very different draft right yeah, now yeah yeah yeah, 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 <laughs> um, yeah. but leafkin druid is very good it stalls yep. out early like it stalls the game a little bit yeah um so i'm full i'm fine with that yeah i like it i like leafkin druid i like rule of law too for commander but not here no um okay overgrown oh, elemental That's wow it. yeah 100 percent. we do have another troll very good card uh we have a wolfkin bond which i think is an okay card it's not amazing uh again not in this deck for sure no um active treason good, but yeah overgrowth elemental yeah 100 percent, all day every day uh <laughs> lightning stormkin is good god's willing raise the alarm silverback shaman octoprophet uh which is a great name <laughs> steadfast sanctuary <laughs> Merlin, blah blah maniacal rage mammoth spider blah 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 all right um so silverback shaman to me is the right uh, one to do. yeah i mean the lightning stormkin would be great uh, cause it is an elemental. It's a two, two with haste and flying. Oh no. Yeah. We're in this. Colors. I think we that's should get probably the better. Um, it's just harder to cast. Let's look at that curve real quick. Uh, well it justifies <laughs> us more getting blue stuff. Yes, it does. And it's an elemental for two. Yep. I think that's the right pick. Uh, I really like silverback shaman though. Silverback's I'm good. I'm super big on, on the shaman. A five, four is a, not a negligible. Oh, ne yeah, blah, 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 blah. You can't ignore it. Uh, when it dies, it replaces itself via a card is great, but yep. no, totally. no, I'm in a hundred percent agreement. Um, now I'm looking for green, like just for the team rail uh, stuff. So yeah. do you pick? So, okay. There's a dragon mage. Ask. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's correct. There's a gift of paradise, which technically can help fix you and ramp you. I don't know if that's hundred percent correct. Um, there's a greenwood sentinel, which is an okay two two um yeah. those are really the three picks here there's infuriate and uh natural end but those i don't think are anywhere close i think it's the sentinel for curve sake Whoa. Oh, all right okay. i guess it is i guess it is <laughs> <laughs> uh i do i do i think it's the sentinel for curve sake um i'm gonna make the same pick here uh because what does our two look like what do we have so far for two is not a lot so the troll um the, the troll, sentinel one now, sentinel, the, the leaf kin druid, leaf kin, and then the the storm, storm skin. skin or storm kin, yeah, wow, skin. <laughs> so uh, another sentinel here. So I'm I want to look for a set or uh, efficient spells now mm. to give my creatures some punch because I'm gonna find better creatures the next pack as well. Mm -hmm. Um, but I need bodies for those spells to affect. And sent greenwood sentinels are fine. They're two twos with vigilance. Mm -hmm. Um, they're excellent for green decks. So I'm gonna pick plenty of those. Um, Ooh. all right oh we have I predator mean, or highlands um so i would be more apt to pick the dual land if it was blue and then another color that we're in you yeah, know what I, I don't mean? think we picked the blue land here but you what you don't want to run into drafting too many bombs you don't um you, you really want don't. though i don't know that we have I we would don't say we, have we don't we can draft the predator all. here we definitely yeah. do we just have the dragon mage yeah um so i'm in for that the rip scale predator bingo bingo definitely good all right, Fortress Crab, Soul Mender, <clears throat> Zephyr Charge, Maniacal Rage, Stone Golem. Uh, yes. We play Mani I mean, we take Maniacal Rage. Yep, excuse we me, certainly but... do. We probably cut it though, but yeah. Oh, perfect. Thornwood Falls. That's what we. Take. Oh, hey, there we go. Um, nice. Veil of Summer, right? Uh, I mean, I guess blue or black spell. It's either that. Or... Yeah, I mean, it's not. I don't think any of it's great. <clears throat> um, no, none of it's awesome, but. You permit you control. I would honestly maybe take I mean, convolute, they, but I don't really like either. You think so? I'm kind of. I don't thinking... think it matters too much. I don't think I'm, you're definitely not main decking either of them. No, so, I like, think Veil of Summer is more well ferocious pop over yeah, bond. I think. Yeah, yeah, I'm fine with that. For curve and spider. Mana spider sounds good, and then swamp. Your swamp, <laughs> cool. All right, wow, look Our at this, second dude. planar cleansing. This is insane. All right, so we are looking. Um, oh God, I love Vampire of the Dying Moon, but we can't. Yeah, it's um, a good card um let's look for some good shit there's oh. none well there's uh, no i won't say there's none um there's not great stuff but 
Okay, Cloud so... Cloud Can Seer is not terrible. Cloud Can Seer is elemental, it's flying, and it draws you a card. Yeah. I think that's definitely the Oh, pick. it's elemental! Hell yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Um, Cloud Can Seer all day. I'll say really quick, a uh, quick thing for the Spectral Sailor. Yeah. Um, that's excellent. It's a really good card, actually. No, it is excellent. Um, yeah. One drop, one one flyer with flash, and then you can also sync mana to just start drawing cards. Yep. Like, very, very good. But I think we're mm-hmm. we're clearly going for elementals. I think Cloud Can Seer does that perfectly. So. I agree. There are so <laughs> many elementals. I'm telling you, dude, these synergies are the thing the thing you need to do. Yeah. Boreal Elemental. Yeah, That's I think it. it's that. there's also a sleep paralysis, which I do think could be considered. Uh, but I don't think it it's is, better. I don't either. Um We are light on removal though, I will say that. Uh there's I mean, also the true. the guile here or gyre, whatever. Uh, is actually a pretty decent uh, pseudo. Oh removal. no, we need that. I think that's better. Um, <laughs> we need that. Uh, yeah. So captivating Geyer is one of those giant tempo plays in limited. Yeah. Uh, this helps in the last two quadrants, which are the most important: winning the mm-hmm. game and losing the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, this helps you with both. Yeah. Right. No, I'm I'm 100 with you. And board Saul. Yep. Captivating Geyer all day, every day. You're so right. <clears throat> okie dokie don't love this um not a lot here uh so we have the wolf rider saddle which is like fine um pulse of marasa not i mean it's good for recursion if you can recur like a bomb uh which does tend to give you enough value that it's worth it uh the courser not great winged words i would look at our flyer count before saying we should pick that i know Um, we have one (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that's we it, have two no the cloud can see her as well oh you're right um, yeah, i don't think it's and four excuse me the storm, storm can. can um but i don't think that that's enough to make it great um do we have four no we have three did i right? say dragon mage storm can is here yeah we have three yeah we have three uh, uh I, I mean i don't think so either no i don't think it's great again drawing cards and is always great in limited it's not it's not as great no. as people think it is um but Hmm. I would honestly either argue that or maybe the saddle uh, just because we are going to be pretty creature heavy. Uh, and so having a little bit of a buff like that is it is going to at least in a position where we're playing out similar creatures to the opponent. It's going to give us a little bit of an edge just because it's an equipment and it sticks around. Um, sure. Not necessarily playable in the deck that we're running. No, with. I think we cut it. I don't love anything from this deck. I think we cut a lot of it. Yeah maybe it's just pulse that's the thing with that in mind if we're probably cutting it we can throw pulse in if the deck needs a little something something i'm fine with that i could take Uh, pulse just because we've got other like we have three threes now none of them have menace but there's enough value with the pulse like pulling something back that i think that's worth it yeah you can get any of your bombs back with pulse i like it save exactly um i would weirdly argue there's two possibilities here you're thinking plummet or netcaster spider yeah um so plummet only because flyers are so prevalent since it's like a forced archetype in this set sure where they have like the the actual lord for flyers and stuff like people go for it more often sure generally you're going to end up against a flyer so main decking one plummet i'm okay with not more than that um but i just because we're so light on removal i would consider it the other option i think is the spider I hear uh, you. Um, and I'm I, okay. Kind of I think way. you're right with Plummet in that. I think depending also on how you're competing here, mm-hmm. uh, if you are... Oh, Jesus. <laughs> um, we'll speed through this. Okay. Uh, yeah, Plummet, I think, is the right pick. Um, gosh, there's really nothing here for us. Uh octoprophet or raider yeah i mean they're serve oh actually no i'm sorry temple of epiphany is definitely the pick mm, we're in yes those colors i suppose scry land so i don't I would love definitely i don't love it. tapped lands i don't love You're tapped right. lands but it yeah. definitely upgrades some You're of our fine. other lands so You're i'm right. okay with that uh creeping go. trailblazer definitely the pick yeah the uh, second creeping uh, trailblazer definitely again, the pick. <laughs> yes uh i guess yeah the uh the thunderkin awakener i don't know that his ability is super relevant to us i don't know but either. it's an, an elemental right so it might it. it might matter um sideboard plummet sideboard another i think plummet. we have enough three drops that i'm not You're super worried about right. 
Uh, Cheese it kind of be anything. pup. Sure. It's filler puff. Any, meeny, miny, moe, because check. Value big temple. <laughs> Negative. Uh, spider. Yeah, yeah. Sage's row. Not much in these last few picks, guys. Nope. It's all drag. Um, um, do we get to see? Okay, we do. Whoa, what am I doing? You're adding it to the deck. How am I? Yeah. Um, okay, well, so we kind of hedged our way into a team or elemental deck, yeah. I think, which I'm not like super. Um, I mean, we got a lot of the pretty good elemental like uncommons so we got risen reef uh we got the yeah. trailblazer we got the stormkin um i think because we picked up trailblazers I mean, um that's like a 100 percent of the card we need so you can you can argue cutting some well except for all of our blue creatures are elementals <laughs> I definitely would argue that yeah, we I need to like. You have to be. We have to. Be I think team. you cut everything that's not an elemental. I mean, that's definitely your starting point, and then you fill right. in from there. So I'm with that. Um, but uh, yeah, we got a lot of elementals actually, and some of them are really good payoffs. Yeah, um, agreed. Agreed. Yeah. Uh, Risen Reef being one of the like crazy good cards out of this set. Yeah. It's like one of the best, if not the best, uncommon. All right. So um, for all elementals, we had eleven ultimately, which good. is yeah, that's fine. That's pretty awesome. Um and then from here I would look at curve and then try and fill right. out. So there are some definites that we play, like shock, we're gonna play. Oh, 100%. that's just a great card that needs to get played. 100%. Uh, we don't have a lot of like flying like hate or at least some kind of way to control that. So I would look at like the netcaster spiders, the mammoth yeah. spiders, things like that, just to be able to control the air a little yeah. bit. Netcaster to me is better than mammoth just because of the curve sake. I like having a one of mammoth just to be able to deal it's with It's not like, a bad card. Yeah, it's but great. I just mean to deal with things like cloud kin seers mm -hmm. and stuff like that because it handles yeah, yeah, those yeah. better. It's um, just, a, it's a very um, passive card at five. It is. It's a defensive card. And yeah. I definitely Which, agree. Which, granted, the three drop spider is as well. I just, I think for three, I'm okay with that more. Sure. No, I definitely um, see that. I um, don't think you put in mage just yet. No, I wouldn't um, think so. Um, again, most of the decisions boys... now are going to be based around curve. So. Right. We're not going to take you through our deck building process because no, you can't see it. You won't see it you towards won't get the end. The, the full thing. Um, but um, basically, I mean, you saw there we have a few disagreements in the draft, but mm -hmm. um, we kind of ended up in the place that we expected to end up, which yeah. was that elemental stack. Yes. Um, and while I agree with you, I don't like going three color. I think in our case, we almost had to because of the uncommons that we ended up getting. Uh, we don't had, we didn't have to. I think it was a, an easy pit to make. Sure. Um, because I mean, you do have good, you there's know, some really good yep. yeah uncommons there um, so i i think we, we never have to go right three thing. it's always a, a safer bet i think yes to, and i agree anyway um, but anyway so yeah i know we're kind of rushing through this a little bit because i know you guys can't see it uh which is kind of lame uh but right we'll figure out we'll a way. figure out a better way to do it in the future but hopefully you guys got something out of that we do of course have our crack of packs uh sponsored by grand slam comics and collectibles oh, not bad uh i'm looking for yaruk I got uh, Mu Yanling. Oh, cool. I got Marauding I think, Raptor. I don't think I'm looking for anything. You don't have a, a certain card? Yeah. So how do you feel about Blood Soaked Altar, dude? Uh, I have not actually played it. You shouldn't. I don't think it's very good. You don't think so? No. Um, I don't think it's very good. Uh... Mu Yanling is probably my pick. This yeah, pack I mean, is not a... very good. Planeswalkers well, are great, there's though. there's Boreal Elemental, but I think her minus three is nice enough. Mm -hmm. If I can control the board a little bit better, yeah. you know? If I control the ears, it's pretty sweet. Cool. Um, I the don't think the Raptor is a good pick for limited. Um, really? It deals two damage to everything you play. And unless you oh, have a lot yeah, of dinosaurs, yeah. no, it's not right. super worth it. You're right. Um, but I did get an Iron Root Warlord, uh, yeah, which is the definitely the pick. I that's did also get like Chandra's Outrage, great removal spell. True. But um, True. Warlord is just such a good card. I have won games just on the back of that card. Yeah, so, dog. Uh, but with that, I think we're going to finally round out this episode. Yes. I know it's a bit of a long one, uh, but we appreciate you guys sticking around. Uh, thank you so much to all of our patrons. We really do appreciate you. Uh, if you're interested in signing up, you can do that in the links below. But with that, 
I think we're going to get out of here. So, my name All is right. Kevin. My name's Will. It's been it resolves. Resolving. Yeah. I got to pee. <laughs>